private funding for startups. Uh, we have a very, very interesting person with us today. Um, let me just give you a brief background on the person before we start off the session. So Dr. Sashanka Ashili is the CEO of Cure Science, founder, smart uh, driving, uh, also scientific advi advisor, uh, tech capital, PLC, and former scientist at Biodesign Institute. Dr. Sashanka Ashili is an engineer, physicist, and an entrepreneur. He currently leads Cure Science TM Institute with the vision of developing curative therapies for neuro and autoimmune disorders. Uh, he's also he's also focused on leveraging early diagnostic immunomodulation and regenerative medicine with uh, patient-centric and data-centric as its mission. Uh, the institute is enabling startups and industry stakeholders in building a pipeline for clinical solutions, including therapeutics. And the institute is also building a patient-centric data hub to leverage on IoT-based solutions to improve clinical outcomes. So we're really happy to have you, sir. Uh, the Institute is also uh, focusing on investment related uh, activities for healthcare and life sciences. We're really happy to have you, sir, for our today's Ask Me Anything series. My name is Pratishta and I will be hosting the series for uh, today's session. Uh, a quick uh, guideline for the session today, I request all the participants to stay on mute and uh, we, will, we will take the questions uh, as and when they come, you can drop in your question in the chat box, and you can we can uh, take the questions uh, once uh, we finish the question uh, by the other person. We'll do it in sequence. If you're unable to unmute, we can also I can also facilitate in asking the question uh, to Mr. Sashi. Over to you, Dr. Sashi, uh, to set the context for the session, uh, sharing your perspective on corporate funding before we move on to the question and answer session. Perfect. Thank you, Pratishta. Thank you, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Uh, Pratishta, thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, just to I, forget, yeah. I forget to mention, sorry, that I also want to mention that, you know, it's early yeah. morning uh, in the U.S. and uh, it's, it's really, uh, uh, we're really happy and glad to have you. And hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Part of me, do they do the activities? which are part of our mission and vision, which is, you know, early diagnostics and uh, and the uh, immune modulation and regenerative medicine, you know, and uh, and uh, and uh, the disease verticals we are looking at primarily into autoimmune and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, neurocentric activities. You know, once we have that, then the question is leveraging our network, talking to our, our advisors and, and reaching out to our network, can we help this company get more traction? You know whether the traction is implementing their their, their technology or their solution into the clinical model, or are 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 bringing adding more value to their solution by bringing more advisors and research collaborations. So these are some of the things we are always looking for, and we are that is where we are a little bit different from accelerators. And I uh, hope that uh, conveys a little about corporate funding and uh, what we do here. So, thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, thank you for setting the context. Uh, we have a lot of questions flowing in on the chat box. The first question is from uh, Mr. Gyanak Krishnan. Uh, so do you want to go ahead and ask your question, please? Uh, Mr. Gyanak Krishnan? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, Dr. Shashanga, sir. Uh, my question is, what are the obstacles and challenges faced by startups to corporate funding and uh, how to overcome them? First and foremost, you know, being a founder myself, right? Uh, you know, corporate funding is not very well uh, streamlined. For example, if you are a, if you are an entrepreneur, you're, you're always looking for money. Where are you going to get money, right? So there are uh, some platforms where it is, as an entrepreneur, where you can go FS6, F6s or FS6, but where all the accelerators and all these things come into picture, where you can see the deadlines and everything. But when it comes to corporate funding, there is no such thing. So that's a very, very ecosystem challenge, if you will. And the only way to find where these companies are by looking at other companies in your ecosystem, in your vertical. You know. So for example, if you are in the healthcare vertical, if you are looking into 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 funding within the healthcare vertical, I would suggest you know. Take a look at your competitors, where they are raising. Take a look at your uh, at, at other players within the ecosystem. 
where they are funded. And also remember, every pharma has their own corporate venture for um, and there are other other uh, non profits like ourselves which are also playing in this space so for example if you take um, if you take isb out of seattle or or tgen out of arizona you know all these not necessarily entertain the external corporate funding they are much more focused on internal corporate funding but that is one of the biggest challenge if you are looking at corporate funding is there is no uh, uh, single platform or single a single entity where you can go and start from. the only thing is you have to look around for different competitors and other companies where they are raising money and i would also encourage you to look at crunchbase you know there are platforms like crunchbase where you can get some insights into you know within this vertical who are the investors you know and what kind of investment they do you know that that would be my suggestion I have two more um, short questions for you, Doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the different types of funding provided by corporates, and how startups can be benefited and encouraged to become an entrepreneur? Corporate funding is uh, corporate funding, as I mentioned, it's much more of a strategic um, uh, investment than ecosystem-based investment. So, for example, if you look, take a look at the accelerators, right? The accelerators or incubators. they are funded by either local ecosystem players you know for example if you take insurtech accelerators within insurtech or within cybertech if you take you know more very often the funders the behind the scene funders who write or wrote the check for that accelerator are probably you know the 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 players within that ecosystem so so when you are looking at that that's absolutely absolutely the way but in the corporate funding that's not the way we are always looking at the strategic partnerships does that answer your question yeah uh, very much and uh, the small question uh, actually mm-hmm. i'm into uh, developing and designing and developing of medical devices now is mm-hmm. it uh, strategically important to get aligned with the corporate mission and vision to get the corporate funding not technically when you say aligned that's uh, very subjective so so for for startups yes the answer is yes you know if you are into medical devices you really can't go to a pharma company right you know pharma is less interested in medical devices they are more interested in the molecules right so so <clears throat> but very often what happens is whoever is the, whoever the corporate is very often they kind of uh, uh, you know how would i say they kind of invest in companies that they that they foresee if they have any strategic interest in it now the now the problem here is how do you know whether they have the strategic interest in it or not because it's an internal conversation that is happening at the corporate level so we will never have that insight i would suggest you know just reach out to them and and have a chat with them but very often in the corporate funding uh, you, one thing i would also uh, caution against is they are not into early early phase startups you know and and as you can imagine in the medical devices and uh, and healthcare and life sciences vertical you know the idea the, the idea might be great but there's a long way ahead when compared to the technology based startups where you know we have an idea develop the product launch it in the market right in the medical or health health and life sciences space that's not the case you have an idea that's great where is the ip you know and what kind of traction you have what kind of in vivo um, uh, models did you deploy you know all those things come into picture so corporate funding is uh, less into early phase i would say and uh, more into late early phase and and then further downstream and also remember corporate funding these are corporates so you're looking at them. they have the ability to put big money so you're looking at the uh, at the uh, at the uh, at the uh, um, at a at a, a different level of uh, investment yeah thank you dr shashank sir for the great insight thank, thank you. you thank you thank you uh, the next question is by uh, prince rao uh, prince do you want to go ahead and ask a question uh, yes good evening all of you good evening so my question is basically i am into share trading and equity holding from the last 3 years i am 21 mm-hmm. right now i started share market when i was 17 my main concept at the uh, like at end of my year is to have a hedge fund in india mm-hmm. i have gone through all the cb regulation and after all i have met many investors and even even uh, very huge corporates 
but the productivity and the outcome was zero uh, do like this this hedge fund company is not regulated by sebi or any other government uh, like government department so why it is so difficult to, to get a startup funded which is not regulated so, by government so if i understand correctly this is a fintech question and and uh, what you are saying is uh, you are trying to start a hedge fund and uh, the and, and i'm facing challenges in raising money is that is that correct yes sir is it yes okay. sir yes sir. okay so so fintech uh, coming from insurtech i'm a little bit familiar with fintech but much more importantly you know whether it is fintech or or healthcare or insurtech you know the regulatory players are always going to be there having said that different ecosystems will have different regulators and different uh, pathways to get it but but much more importantly if you are looking at the raising of the funds you know across different verticals fundraising is still the same which is you know what is your traction and why should i invest right you know whoever you talk to you have to answer those two questions uh, you have to answer those two questions and also remember it's a sales process don't forget that it's a sales process meaning you need to close the deal meaning the problem is might not be much might not be much into the regulatory or, or anything else problem might be sales pitch you know by any means i'm not saying you're not a good salesman what i'm trying to say is you might want to refine your sales pitch you know so okay. so you are absolutely right in terms of hedge funds you know there are not many hedge funds the ecosystem is not much developed in india but that also gives you two things one is a big problem which is you are trying to open a new market where people might not be much familiar with you know that's one problem but but on the flip side you have a huge market so if you make if you refine your pitch or if you get your traction you have a huge market you know billion more than billion people and 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 the investments are you know everywhere you know hey and if you if you can open a hedge fund hey, that's uh, you know we all come to you friends <laughs> <laughs> sure sir maybe soon thank you sir thank you uh thank you next question is by laksh lakshya sharma lakshya do you want to uh, uh, yes ma'am uh, uh, good morning doctor so you nearly uh, answered the question i was going to ask uh, that at uh, what stage a startup should be that a corporate will consider funding so sir i am founder of minimize system uh, developed a smart thermometer so i filed patent for that uh so as you said that uh, i mean uh, you need to show some traction so should i wait i mean i, I should first test the feedback of my product and then like uh, go to corporate for funding or uh, right now i am at prototype stage sir okay that's uh, that's that's a very very good question actually i have huge yeah. interest in that area wearables you are going after wearables right so okay so so that's a, that's a huge interest of, of mine so let me let me tell something you know uh, this is again not from the corporate uh, side on overall you know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a chicken and egg problem money versus uh, traction you know it's a chicken and egg problem which are you what are you going to break first right you know if you go to investor he says show me your traction and uh, you go to you go to your client to show, he says uh, give me a polished product and here you are sitting to get a polished yes, product yes. you need the x, x amount of dollars so you are in a yes, yes. situation where you know there is no easy way I to play. but yeah, yeah. but I'll, i'll tell you one thing whatever the product you have whatever stage it is okay. you know you file the patent that's okay. great you know stop refining the product by any means i'm not okay. saying you to you need to stop but focus much more on deployment execution you know so for example you know you are in chennai right you are in chennai you have a smart thermometer right now the market thanks to covid you know one thing that is opened up is you know everyone yeah. is yeah. Ex- exactly yeah. exactly you know <laughs> you know as much as it is unfortunate the flip side of that is yeah. you know it opened up um, it opened up a consumer market where people were not uh, health sensitive before now everyone is yeah. watching their back you know yes. so and 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 if you are looking into any kind of covid related activity the first and foremost everyone wants to look at is what is the temperature variation so you know i myself 
as a fitbit we are uh, we are uh, yeah. we are uh, we are trying to deploy fitbit into clinical setting to look into <clears throat> the readmission rates you know yeah. but uh, but but that is your immediate um, uh, opportunity from the business side right yes, you know yes. go ahead and deploy now who you are want to deploy with you can choose you want you you can always say i want to deploy with um, uh, ambanis you know a relapse you can always say that uh-huh. nobody stopping that right but you can also always say i'm going to deploy with this small manufacturing company who has five employees okay now is the is that guy going to pay you anything the answer is that he might not pay he might not even talk to you because he is he's, he's having trouble finding the labor right now but 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 your rolodex your network your connections you you can easily reach this guy versus mukesh ambani right or 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 whoever the ambani brothers you you get my concept right you know so yes, so yes. so you can always reach this guy and deploy you know your goal at this point should be solidifying your product with customer insights or 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 insights you generated from the field not the insight you generated from your friends you know this is one thing i i i i learned in a hard way after coming out of the academic world you know i spent my 10 years of my life in a dark room i have a phd in optical physics so as you can imagine anything you do with optics or 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 light you literally need to shut your room black you know so i spent uh, my 10 years of my life in dark room and i came out and uh, and i was like you know pretty naive and then i realized you know i came i i, I invented this solution i'm like you know what distracted driving is a huge problem and everyone is going to like and it's going to be great right but uh, with the real world what i realized is people has bigger problems to deal with than temperature or distracted driving yes you know you, you know you need to understand to build that bridge where who is looking for your product and how can you build that bridge with them and it's always about relationships you know so i would say instead of focus you need to focus on funding don't get me wrong you need to knock every door you can and uh, and uh, being in india sometimes uh, you might uh, you might think you know the the grass on the other side is green you know uh, if i were in america i could have done this i could have done that you know right but uh, but the reality is every american accelerator will accept your application that's a reality you know if you if if you if if every american accelerator is going to accept your application there's a good chance you might be able to find money out there and if you find money you might not be able to visit here but you you know visas and all those things but you can always find a partner mm-hmm. so my point is find alternate paths that's one part then the second part so, is uh, so get so. metrics from the clients from actual users mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and uh, and when you are looking at corporate funding and i'll go back to the same thing which i said is you know for example you can always send me your application right you know and the what when i when i'll be looking when my team will looking at your application what they are looking for is how can we take this technology and take it to the next level that's one question and how can we bring that technology into uh, to america that second question so so you know corporate funding is 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 you know it's uh, always matters who you know right you know the opening of the door right so so it's it's you can touch corporate funding but at this stage mm-hmm. i would say you yes. know go and touch accelerators and uh, and uh, yeah accelerators and uh, and and remember your market is fast moving so don't focus on um, you know i've seen this also in the in the ecosystem which is uh, people always say you know i don't want to get diluted right yeah. so my 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 suggestion there is you can always be 100% owner of a zero revenue company or you can be a 0.1% yeah. owner of a 1 billion dollar company pick your poison you know yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, your... especially yeah. fast moving market your moving yeah. market is moving fast Uh, your market is moving fast and uh, shoot me the your one pager shoot me your one pager okay sir sure sir and thank okay. you for the precious insights sir so sir uh, summary is uh, i mean i should go for accelerator and uh, get 
I'm, I'm losing you, Sharma, Mr. Sharma. Yeah, you went on mute. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So, so the summary I get is uh, I should go for accelerator at this stage, and uh, I mean keep the all the funding channel open, but accelerator yes. should be a preferred option, and uh, get market validation. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Validation. Get the validation. Yeah. Even accelerators are going to ask you what's your validation traction. You know, traction yeah. is important, Thank you. Thank and you. nobody cares. Yeah. You know, nobody cares whether this traction came from, uh, you know, a big company or small mm -hmm. company. Use yeah, the traction. Got your point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Laksh. Uh, so we have another interesting question by Rajiv Ranjan. Uh, Rajiv, uh, do you want to ask a question yourself? Yeah. Hello. Hi, Rajiv. Hi, sir. Uh, actually, uh, you know, I am a little bit confused about the different funding, like seed funding, debt funding, and equity-based funding, as well as the corporate funding. What are the pros and cons, and how to negotiate with the different incubator, accelerator, or even corporate funding to deal at the startup level to give the as little as equity to get the funding for this stage or any further stage and if there is any options to opt for exit plans if there is any option how to address that so 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 bottom line is somebody is putting their hard-earned money on the table right that's a bottom line you know, if they're putting their hard-earned money, they are looking at return on investment. You know, think, you put yourself in the investor's shoes. Why would you write a check? You know, so if there is no return on investment or if the risk is, is high, right? That's one point. The second point is always remember, you can always negotiate. You can always say, you know, I don't want to give equity. I don't want to give this much equity, that much equity. That's a very subjective conversation. But end of the day, what matters is leverage. Leverage. Do you have leverage? So what the, what I mean by that is, are you desperately in need of money? Can you survive without money, without this, this investor? If you can survive without this investor, then you have the leverage. And if you can't survive without this investor, then you do not have the leverage. So if you do not have the leverage, your options are very limited. That means you have to, you will end up accepting investor stocks. Now, if you have leverage, what will happen is you are, you are trying to raise, uh, you know, million dollars and you, you have the leverage, then all of a sudden you will have two million on the table. So that is a direct indication that you have the leverage. But, but if you are trying to raise one million dollars and you don't even have a hundred thousand dollar check, that tells that you do not have leverage. So, so in reality, you know, being an entrepreneur, being an inventor myself, you know, we all feel proud about our achievement. But the reality is, the invention is just an idea, nothing more than an idea. It has no financial value unless it is proven by the market. So, if it is proven by the market, obviously you'll get money. Will you'll get money? You'll have leverage, and you will you will have options. So you need to consider uh, that is where it boils down to traction. You know, if you if you have a uh, if you have um, you know developed a product that costs one dollar or you know hundred rupees, and your margin is fifty rupees, and you already sold one lakh products, then yes, you have the leverage. Then you can always say to the investors, you know what, I'm raising money at this rate. If you want to invest, invest. If not. Let me find another investor. An investor will look at the traction. There is a good chance he'll consider his terms. Does that does that answer your question, Rajiv? Yes, sir. And in, in in terms of exit plan, do we need to be careful or? No, I would I would say you know the the minute you talk about exit plan, you know uh, <clears throat> this is what I learned. Exit plan, you need to have a plan. Don't get me wrong. You need to have a, you know, we all want to exit by an IPO, right? You know, we all want to take an exit uh, by going to an IPO, right? But the reality is, you know, this statistics, some wise man told me there are no hard numbers here, but here are the statistics I'll put in front of you. More than 90% of the startups will never cross the value of that, that is two years. 
they'll close up in less than two years. Less than 5% of the startups actually go ahead and raise high seed money. And then less than 3% of the startups will actually go to series A and series B. And less than 1% of the startup actually become a unicorn that is a billion dollar valuation. So with that in mind, with that context in mind, think of, you know, exit plans. What are the possibilities that an inventor, what are the, pro what is the probability that an inventor can actually, you know, say that his exit plan is valid? Less than 1%, less than 1%. So with that in mind, you know, exit plan, everybody wants to see exit plan in the PowerPoint, which you are going to present. Everybody wants to see it, but the relevance of that is highly questionable. So if any accelerator or incubator ask, uh, so if we are funding and this is equity best funding and within three years, if you have exit plan, well and good. Otherwise, if you are offering us uh, at market price of your company, well and good or little bit ever we can give you a, a exit plan otherwise we reserve the right not to uh, exit from the equity best funding and we will keep your shares so how to deal with this situation suppose it, it, I, would, I would i would i would say i would say stay away from the tax accelerator or incubator here is here are the reasons here are the reasons there is something called the smart money and dumb money so I'll give you a classic example, you know, and um, and uh, since I'm from South India, you're from South India, I'll leave you in our own uh, terms. You know, we have uh, this uh, loans we take, uh, family and friends, based on interest, right? We That's a common in our culture, right? You know, when we need yeah. money, we'll ask, you know, our family and friends, and sometimes we pay interest, right? That's a classic yeah. uh, model, cultural model, right? And, uh, and uh, when you take that money, what you are getting or what you are assuring, you are assuring the person who gave you money that you are going to pay the interest and you are going to pay the money, the principal money. What you are not telling the telling them is that they are going to make money out of it. You are not telling them that. You are not assuring them that. So, for example, if you take one lakh rupees loan from your friend of yours, you are not telling them he is going to make three lakhs in two years or one year. You are telling them. I'll pay you more, your one lakh in one year, but I'll also pay you three percent interest, right? That's a that's a classic model, right? But in a startup, if somebody wants, somebody asks assurance on the outcome. See, in the in the classic model in our culture, the outcome is simple. We pay our money back, we pay the interest. But in the startup world, if somebody asks you about the outcome, you know, assurance about the outcome, that tells you that this investor is not sophisticated. So this investor is looking at a classical model where he wants his money back, he wants his interest back, right? He's not looking at the, you know, startup is always high risk, high reward model. You might burn your um, uh, burn your cash. There's a good chance, 99% of the time you are going to burn your cash. But 1% of the time you are going to make it. From the investor point of view, if they are investing in 10 companies, then there is a chance that one of them will go to go to go to go and make big money and cover all their losses. That's an investor perspective. So if they do not have that investment perspective, then you are looking at a person or an entity that probably you might want to stay stay away from. Because exit plans are dependent upon your traction, and your traction is dependent on your market. Both of them are not in your control. So that means they are asking you an assurance or, or a clear plan, or are or, or tying that to something, you know, keeping shares or selling shares, then they have no idea what they are investing into. And you want to stay away from people who you are investing, who, who you want to bring in. Remember, being an entrepreneur, you got to remember, you got to remember one thing is, you know, the day you start your company versus the day you close the company or you go into an IPO, your personal relationships need to be the same. You don't want to build, burn bridges by starting the startup, right? So, so if you want to keep those things, you really need to uh, consider 
wetting the investors. This is what I would say. You know, just because someone wants to write a check doesn't mean you should take it. You have to wet the investor. They need to understand the risk. If they don't understand the risk, please don't take money because it's going to destroy your reputation and your relationships. So does that, does that answer question. your question, Rajiv? Yes, sir. absolutely, absolutely. So I have an extension of question. So on mm -hmm. an average, uh, if uh, incubator or accelerator is asking for seed funding or debt funding, on an average, what equity one should offer and what is the justified uh, equity to offer? So there are, uh, it depends on the vertical, it depends on uh, traction, it depends on everything, right? You know, there is no guideline per se. But here is uh, here is what uh, what uh, what I saw happening. Accelerators, at least in the U.S. based, I'm talking about exclusively U.S. based. I've been to Middle East, I've been to South America. The ecosystems are completely different. Okay, so so in Middle East and South America, they they generally don't put cash upfront cash, but they take equity to for enabling the startup. You know, in the U.S. So if you are looking at um, accelerators, you are looking at the less than 10% of the equity for uh, for anywhere between 10,000 to 150K USD, less than 10% of the equity. Accelerators on an average, on an average, but again, you know, there are always exceptions, you know, so, but uh, consider, consider that as your starting point in an accelerator. But once you move up the ladder from accelerator to, you know, high seed rounds and uh, series A and all those things. On an average, it's 15 to 25 percent. They'll take equity, but but very often it's 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 a money they are going to put on the table and it's a doors they are going to open. So you need to look at the bigger picture, you know, before even thinking about the equity. You know, for example, if if, 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 you know, we are trying to raise money on smart driving venture, uh, you know, we are, uh, we are working through investors and all those things. So let me give you that side of the story. If a person is ready to write a check, and if I vet that person and that person is a genuine investor who understands the risk and he's going to open some doors for me, I would be less interested or less worried about the equity part. If that makes any sense to you, you know. Yeah, yeah. I would be less worried about the equity part because I would be much more worried about the company growth. Yeah. You know? That makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Sachi. Thank you so much okay, for the time. Answering Rajiv's questions. I think uh, we got some really interesting insights there that, you know, don't take money if you don't need it. Choose your uh, investor Thanks. wisely and yes. uh, also look beyond just the money. Yes. That is that is one thing, you know, uh, you know, uh, very often we think that, you know, hey, they are writing money. What else you want? Right. You are, you, are, yeah. you are an entrepreneur. You are desperate for money. You need money to pay the bills. You know, they are writing money. What else do you want? Right. But the reality is, if you don't vet your investor, that will become a liability for you. You know, so you don't want an investor on your cap table because once they come onto the cap table, your equity, right, there is absolutely no way you can uh, uh, you can move on unless you close the company, you know, but uh, but uh, you don't want to bring people onto your team if they are not adding value beyond the money. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate, I appreciate Thank your you. experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank we you. have a question from um, Panchal Nikhil Kumar. Uh, his question is uh, on can he do a startup and PhD at the same time? Uh, Panchal, I think we can take this offline. This is more uh, related to the incubator. You can write to us and we can help you uh, in understanding what is it. Uh, Actually, pra Pradeshta, Pradeshta, if, if you don't mind, like, can I answer that question? Can, sure, can, sure. Can please, please, question? Go please go ahead, doctor. So, so, uh, so you're asking a question whether I can do a PhD and uh, start a startup, right? So yes. to just give you, I, I had seen both sides of the conversation, uh, doing myself, getting myself into PhD and, and also doing the startup. Let me tell you one thing, which is, you know, startup is like PhD. So the question you need to ask yourself is, can you do two PhDs at the same time in different verticals? 
you know, consider like, you know, doing a PhD in physics and PhD in history. Can you do that? So you are the best judge of that. You know, whoever the gentleman asked the question, you are the best judge. I'm not trying to say you can't do it. You know, there's always exceptions, but, uh, but you are the best judge of it. So you have to answer, you know, can you do two PhDs at the same time? Remember on, in the PhD side, you have to publish at least one journal article every year and multiple conference proceedings. Uh, and and on, the, on, the, on the startup side, you have to raise money, you have to launch the product and you have to manage big team. And on the PhD side, you will be managed by your advisor. So, so different worlds, different activities, different set of activities. And uh, both of them on an average requires uh, a 16 plus hours a day without vacation. So I'll, I'll, with, having said that, I'll leave it to you to <laughs> Okay, th I hope that's answered Panchal Nikhil's question. Uh, Panchal, do you want to add anything to it or can we move forward? Okay, I'm going to move forward in the interest of time. Uh, we have another question uh, from, I think that was answered. So uh, we have a question from Mr. Muthu Krishnan. Uh, Mr. Muthu Krishnan, do you want to go ahead and ask your question, please? Yes, sure. Uh, assuming that a corporate has uh, made investment on a startup. Mm -hmm. What is the exchange the corporate company uh, expect from the startup? Is it like a, a technological collaboration in the future side or just an interest money as an exchange? They have, they have zero expectations. Any investor who is investing in the startup will pretty much have zero expectations. They, the day they write the check, they make an assumption that this money is not coming back. Okay, that's one part, that's one part. You know, the reason is, as I mentioned, you know, out of you, you make 10 investments, nine will go away, one will come back. So you really don't want to make an assumption that, you know, this particular check is going to make my money, you know, as an investor, right? So that's one part, there is no expectation, you know, they just write the check, they like your technology, they like the team, they like uh, the market traction, they write the check, they move on and, you know, periodically they'll come back and check in with you, you know, every three months or six months. Hey, are you doing? You know, that's where the conversation ends. But much more importantly from the corporate uh, uh, investment side, what they are looking is they are looking much more strategic partnership. You know, if I, if we invest in this company, you know, in addition to the ROI, which is, you know, financial ROI, is there any other ROI that comes to the table? You know, it can be a corporate social responsibility you know, for, for, you know, all the other reasons, you know, but much more importantly, does it add value to the product portfolio that we are dealing with? Because remember, corporate venture fund, though it's a corporate venture fund, corporate is still a for-profit company, they need to make money. So they have their own uh, goals as well. And one of their goal is always expanding the product portfolio, entering into different verticals. So, so they're always looking, if, if they're investing in a startup, they're always looking from the lens that, does if assuming this company is successful, assuming this team deploys the solution properly, does it add any value to my existing activities in addition to the financial ROI? And if it does, then the question is, what is the financial ROI I'm looking into? Because you know, to give you a classic example, you know, there are this uh, rare diseases, right? There's a category of rare diseases, you know. For example, uh, uh, all the MERS and SARS, COVID, all these were, you know, pretty much rare diseases before COVID-19, right? You know, whether it is Ebola, you know, all these are pretty much rare diseases. So not many corporates are always looking into it, you know? So so even, even when they look into it, the first and foremost question they have to answer is, well, how can I justify this investment into my shareholders? Remember, as a startup, you have your equity holders. As a corporate, they have shareholders at much bigger level. So they are still answerable to someone. So that is uh, that is what they are always looking to. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we have a, a not a question but a comment from Mr. Deepak. <laughs> uh, his takeaway. Uh, Deepak, you wanna do you wanna share it with uh, the audience? Hi, uh, actually, just that was just a comment uh, saying uh, thank you to, to uh, Dr. Shashanka. 
because um, I've, I've been developing this mask uh, for COVID and it is a, a mask that goes uh, for the healthcare thing beyond COVID also. It's not just for the virus. And I've also already gone through three different iterations of the mask and refining it, refining it. In fact, as of today, uh, I've taken another step where it will take maybe three, four days more to refine it. But I, your comment, which said that stop refining the product, start deploying it, really struck me and it, it has opened my eyes and I think I should maybe next week stop it and just go for it, start uh, getting yes. into the thing. So I just wanted to yeah. say thank you. It, it is just yeah. like something that came right on time for me, I think. Yeah. I agree. You know, yeah. being an engineer myself, right? You know, if yeah. I, you know, if my own product or my own research or my own engineering skill set, right? We will never stop. There is, there is no end to product development. We all know that. You know, the product yeah. is never in the best shape. You know, there's always this needs to be done, that needs to be done, this needs to be done. But but from the startup point of view, you know, doesn't matter what you're selling. You know, what matters is whatever you are selling, you know, even if it is a cow dung, right? It doesn't matter. If you can make money out of it, then yes, you have a product. So go ahead and deploy, you know, go ahead and deploy, you know. You know, I, I just gave you an example of cow dung because I, we all are familiar, with, yeah. you know, with our background. You know, everyone considers it as a waste, which is might be yeah. true, but there are other ways to use that, right? So convert that into 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 a commodity, into an activity where you can generate money. The investor is always interested in money, ROI, financial ROI, first and foremost interest. Yeah. You know, satisfy that hunger for the investor. You know, then the investor is willing to talk. Then the investor is willing to listen. You know, so that is where you know, Deepak. I'm glad I, I kind of. Um, I helped you in that way, you know. As always, if you guys need anything, please do reach out to me. But, uh, you know, stop refining doesn't mean you have to put a full stop, just put a comma. Yeah. You know, just True. put a comma and start deploying, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, so I have a quick question. So, uh, so would you be able to share some of the successful uh, corporate fundings that you have uh, seen or what do you think? Uh, I mean, success is very, very varied, and I think it 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 is different the way people define it. But what would uh, what would be some of your uh, takeaways uh, from the corporate fundings that have that have happened in the last few years? So corporate fundings are always uh, confidential, right? You know, they don't do the uh, right. unlike accelerators. <laughs> unlike and accelerators, share, that is publicly yes. available. Yes, you know, corporate funding is uh, is uh, is an indoor activity, whereas accelerators are outdoor activity from the marketing point, right? Having said that, you know what I realized in the corporate funding side is is simply, you know, the, the biggest thing you will get as a startup as an entrepreneur is what uh, you might not uh, get always in accelerators. With corporate funding, what you get is the connections, the doors they open. You know, corporate funders can open your doors for investment, open doors for, you know, um, deploying your product and, and open doors to take it to next level, help you build the team. So when you have a corporate funding, what you are having is a, is a partner. It's a partner who is going to worry about your company the same you are worrying, you know. So that's what I would say. But, uh, but uh, when it comes to success stories, I don't have many because very often, you know, Corporate funding is not very well discussed in the market side. People uh, people are less interested in discussing corporate funding because you know whether you take Cisco or whether you take Johnson and Johnson, you know they have uh, they have bigger things to worry about it, right? You know they have uh, this is less less of uh, their priority. But but another important thing which I did not address, I want to uh, add here is when I say corporate funding, always remember the corporates internally they have their own ecosystem, they have their own invention process, they have their own startups internally. So you are going after against their own startups internally. So if there is a conversation, at least a conversation with a corporate venture firm, you can be assured that you passed all those levels. You know, so so that's one thing, especially in the in the life science market. Uh, I years back uh, when I was doing my fellowship at Mizu on the biodesign, I happened to visit uh, Johnson & Johnson. So in Cleveland, they have this huge lab in, in Cleveland where they have all these processes. You know, we came with, in that biodesign, we came with 150 ideas. And then guess what? When we went there, 
all those 150 ideas plus another thousand ideas they already vetted out at some point or the other so so that's the one thing you know on the you can call it as a flip side but the advantage is you know they know exactly what they want you know they know exactly what they want so so it's a, it's a very important way to get money but also on the long run it's a very important partner to have Thank you, Doctor. I think there's one more question, one last question we'll take mm -hmm. from Raji before we wrap up today's session. Yep. Raji, please yep. go ahead and ask your question. Thank you for allowing me. Yes, Raji. Yeah, thank you for allowing me. Uh, can you, can you uh, let me know if I have but my startup has got the big grant from Iraq and uh, uh, can we be able to get the uh, um, apply for accelerator money in USA to get the funding? What was the first question uh, we kind of lost you there? Uh, actually, uh, our startup has got the big grant from the Bayrak. Okay, Bayrak. Okay, 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 Bayrak. Okay. So yes, in that respect, uh, can can. Can I be able to apply for accelerator for getting the funding? At this stage, yes. we we are in the prototype stage itself. Yes, you can, you can, and uh, and as I mentioned, there's never never a, a position where you can't apply. You know, whether it is accelerator, whether it is Series A, whether it is Series B, you can apply. But whether you get it or not, that's a different story. But uh, since you've already got Bayrak. I would highly recommend you to apply, start applying for accelerators because that tells the accelerators and the investors that you already have traction in terms of funding. Somebody believes you, you know, when you come out with a startup idea, the whole question is, does anyone believe your idea works, right? So, but, but getting a buyer grant show can validate that your idea has led, right? So that's all is required to apply for funding, you know, go ahead and apply for yeah. Apart from big grant, we have got a few other grants for our startup. So I was wondering, yeah. can you, can you share uh, the link for different accelerator and other funding which you were talking? FS6. Okay. Google FS6 or F6S. Uh, either of those. FS6, um, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I'll I'll probably share it with uh, Sumitra and Pratisha. You know. FS6, Google FS6, where you have list of accelerators with their deadlines, okay. with their deadline. Thank you so much. Appreciate and also it. GUST, check out GUST too, G-U-S-T, GUST, okay. check, check that out as well. So these are some of the platforms where you, they don't invest directly, they just showcase you, you know, what are the applications due and what are they looking, you know, there. It's uh, for accelerators to advertise their their uh, their, uh, their uh, activities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Find out. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. With that, I think we've clocked six. Thank you so much, Dr. Shashanka, for your time. It was wonderful to hear you, and uh, thank you for your patience in uh, very patiently ans answering all the questions. Uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.